For many people, the worst part of living with the pandemic was dealing with side effects. That includes people trying to recover from chronic homelessness or substance use disorder. One of the key agencies serving those populations locally is St. Francis House, which runs the city's largest day shelter program to tell us about adjusting to a period of crisis and to what happens next is the president and CEO of St. Francis House, Karen Lafrazia. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Karen. No, thank you for having me on this important topic. Karen, I want to talk about uh, not so much what was going on at St. Francis House itself, but the climate you went through that we all went through over the past year. What did this mean for people who've been chronically homelessness, excuse me, chronically homeless or struggling with substance use? Well, you know, I think it's, you know, homelessness is difficult enough outside of a pandemic, when you layer on the fact that the people that have no safe place to live, they were living in congested shelters, um, the, the threat of disease, you know, the spread of disease certainly at the beginning of the pandemic was high. That also brings about its own, uh, uh, an increased sense of stress. We all felt the increased stress and then it's compounded if you're a person experiencing homelessness and it's even more acute when you're struggling with a substance use disorder. And um, so I, I think that we were seeing across the city, lots of people that were uh, struggling to try to uh, remain in recovery and trying to keep themselves both physically and emotionally safe. And it was um, unfortunately for a lot of people that that wasn't able to happen. Well, you were running a day shelter program at a time when it was difficult for most people to go someplace inside for a cup of coffee. How did you make that work? Well, you know, our commitment is always to never turn anybody away. So, right, you know, at the same exact moment that you're having to reduce capacity um, and it, it was in conflict with our, our, our mission to not turn anybody away. So, we um, adapted our physical spaces to allow for as much social distancing as possible. Um, we opened up spaces that for, uh, for people to gather in a congregate way that previously hadn't been. Uh, we relied on plexiglass and, and creating physical barriers where we you know, we're going to fall short of, of being able to do that. You know, when we were faced with the choice of having to have turn people away or to create a different physical environment that could ensure maximum safety for people, guests and staff, uh, we erred on the side of, of adapting our space in a way in which we could reasonably ensure that people were, were safe. Um, and, you know, changed some of the way we operate. Um, you know, for our meals, for instance, we... Um, we just, we went from, instead of having a, a breakfast meal and a lunch meal, we just fed people all day long. And so when you walked in the door, if it was breakfast time, you got breakfast. If it was lunch time, you got lunch. And we shifted that way. And, and there were more demands for, for help from, from the Greater Boston Food Bank from other areas. So I guess you had less coming from there and you had to adjust to that as well. Well, I think the challenge for the food bank and, you know, was was the food uh, source, right? You know, when you look at supply chains and you look at the demand, right, as supply chains became more challenging and the demand became greater, um, you know, the, the food bank and places like that, that, that uh, we would have to depend on for access to food became, had to limit. And so, you know, for us at St. Francis, as we we would, we would need to purchase more food, essentially, you know, things that we might have gotten uh, differently from the food bank, we, you know, we can't not feed people, and the demand really didn't go down. So, um, yeah. Well, unfortunately, uh, the people that you're trying to help are not in a position to recover overnight from their problems, but you help with one thing that's really important, that's called harm reduction. What does that mean exactly? You know, harm reduction is... Um, it's it's a it's an approach, quite frankly. You know, people that are struggling with a substance use disorder are along a broad continuum of places in recovery. There are folks that are actively using and abusing substances, and there are people that may have long-term sobriety and be any place in between that. And depending on where somebody is at in their own personal journey of recovery you need to adapt the way you interact with people. So for people that are at the front end 
of a recovery journey where they may still be actively using substances. They are, the ambivalence is still significant in terms of wanting, you know, making a commitment, feeling capable, feeling hopeful to be able to embark on a, on a, a path of treatment or recovery. What we want to make sure is that those people stay alive. We want to make sure that those, that those people are, we're reducing the amount of harm they may be causing to themselves, the environments. Um, so, so, so providing education, providing access to uh, Narcan for overdose reversal, to ensure that people are, if they're, if they're continuing to engage in um, using substances, we want people to do that in a way in which, um, quite frankly, reduces the harm they can cause they will be causing themselves uh, the, the, the behaviors of, that they might engage in that would cause harm to those around them. Um, and we want them to live to make a different decision another day. And so we have hired two harm reduction specialists that um, really take on a um, stigma-free, non-judgmental approach and walk out to the common or onto the streets of Boston or within St. Francis House itself and build relationships, um, non-judgmental, caring relationships with people. Um, it's essentially meeting people where they're at. Well, at, at another stage, you also help people with, with more permanent housing and, and even entry into the job market. I imagine that might have been set back during the pandemic, at least as far as finding jobs, but, but what does it look like now going forward? Well, you know, the economy for, on, on the workforce front, St. Francis House has a, has a very large um, workforce development program where we work with people who are experiencing homelessness to re enter or enter into the workforce. And so, obviously, during the pandemic, that was very challenging. You know, there were no jobs. Um, now, you know, our, we're, we're back, we're working with folks to, um, to, to do what we've always done, which is to identify their strengths, their talents, abilities, what their career goals are, and to be able to engage with the employer community and uh, present and advocate on behalf of people who are experiencing homelessness, as this is a very specific pathway out of homelessness. If you, if you have the ability to earn income, then you have the ability to stabilize your life. You have a, a stronger ability to be able to find housing because you'll have a, an income stream. So our, our workforce program is back in, in full strength and we're engaging people. We're uh, hopefully on target to serve upwards of 300 people in the upcoming year that are in a homeless situation and can use employment and income maximization as, as the vehicle to which they can exit homelessness. You're also trying to raise money to expand services in the future. What could that mean? Well, you know, I think that going back to the, the, the previous conversation about people who have a substance use disorder, what we know is that being able to access treatment is critically important, right? So we're, we're making investments right now on engaging people through the harm reduction specialist work that we're doing. Uh, about two years ago, we added a recovery support center. It's a peer run support center. Staff and members are, are all in recovery, and there's a embedded within St. Francis House is a dedicated floor just for people in recovery for substances. It's that middle piece. It's that piece of treatment. It's it's a it's the ability for somebody when they do want to make a decision, uh, when they make the decision to to go into treatment. You need access to clinicians, you need access to therapy, to group therapy, individual therapy, you need a structured environment. Uh, accessing those difficult during the pandemic, but um, even before the pandemic, getting people into, into treatment. Sometimes the motivation for treatment is fleeting. You know, you want to capture somebody in that moment and be able to deliver to that person in that exact moment uh, as close to treatment on demand as you can get. So St. Francis House's intention is in this upcoming year is to embed a, a, a licensed outpatient uh, substance abuse treatment clinic uh, staffed by clinicians and uh, certified addiction counselors, uh, case managers, so that when somebody does have that moment where they want to engage, we do not have to refer somewhere else and, and then try to manage for transportation and appointment making, but we can, we can deliver it on site. 
want to ask you to put what you do into a, a wider context, because as you're probably aware, certainly in the mayoral campaign, we've heard a lot of uh, talk about Mass Ave and Cass Boulevard and how things have been getting worse there and what you got to do by responding to things happening there. But but what about the relationship between the kinds of work you do and what's going on there? Um, well, you know, out of Mass and Cass, there, there are, there's a lot of people suffering. I mean, you know, every one of those people that, that's getting all this kind of attention, that, that's somebody that is suffering with a, with a chronic disease of addiction and compounded by homelessness. Uh, what we really need to continue to do is double down on our efforts to, to reach out to these uh, individuals and to uh, provide them hope and access to services and treatment. To, you know, there's, you know, the city of Boston has a, uh, has a, a wonderful program out there that's uh, the engagement center, you know, that's, that's run by the Office of Recovery Services. And it's, it's a place where people who are in that area can come inside and, and, and have some access to food and showers and facilities, uh, you know, bathrooms and facilities and healthcare. Um, Boston Healthcare for the Homeless is out there doing yeoman's work on this, uh, with those folks. We're trying to connect more deeply with um, the engagement center and you know those individuals at um, that stay at Mass and Cass. So, actually, um, just I think two weeks ago now we combined our database so that as people are engaging in the Mass Cass area, they can be enrolled in this in in a in a database. Um, and we can now I know who they are. We can now know them by name. We can have, they can have an identity, but they will be represented in the system. Um, we can know what the crossover is between people that are staying at Mass Cass and those folks that are coming down to St. Francis House. Just in, in the first month alone, I think the engagement center saw over 780 unique individuals. We saw about 800 unique individuals but just in the crossover, we, we were sharing a hundred unique people that we didn't even know at that point until we combined our database. This also will enable us to be more targeted because now we, we people will be represented in a database. And as we start to target housing resources or treatment resources, um, they'll be representative in, in a database. And, and, and for that, you can allocate resources differently. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is a, an incredible need, and it, it's wonderful that people in the city are coming together to focus on this. And thanks for showing us how it's supposed to work. Karen LaFrazia from St. Francis House.